Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over installing Flutter on your system. So this is Ubuntu 17.10. Um, I This will probably work very similarly to almost every other distro. Um, the I don't have good access to a consistent access to Windows or a Mac at all. Um, there are a number of other tutorials out there, videos out there, where you can actually install it on there. But I think the general principles will apply. Now, let me start off by saying that installing Flutter is a major pain in the butt. It is unbelievable. I had to do this, this, and this to figure it out. And there were small little things every step of the way. Didn't know where to click. So let me see if I can simplify this too, okay? There's a little bit of overlap here in a number of things, but and it seems a little bit strange, but please bear with me, okay? So if you click here under flutter.io, you go install. Um, I'm going to ignore all this. Okay, so I'm not going to do any of this. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go IntelliJ. That is the IDE or the, we used to use editors, but this is actually a full out, full blown IDE. IntelliJ, just search it and click download. And this will help us actually develop um, applications from Flutter, okay? So we'll have to keep that in mind. There's two versions, there's the ultimate and there's the community. For hobbyists, someone like me, I'm gonna use community, why? Well, because it has what I need, the Android development. I don't need the web, mobile. I usually use VS Code for something like this, so I won't really need this. You know, if we change careers and I become a developer, maybe I'll do that. But for right now, I'm gonna download community, okay? So hit the download right inside here. Then I'm going to ask you to look, and this is free and open source for the record, Visual Studio Code, so VS Code, is being currently developed to, to try to get on par with IntelliJ in terms of the setup and all that. It's not quite there, but they are working on it. There are some barriers. Hopefully the developer, um, Danny Tuppany, um, has been hired by Google in order to continue to develop the VS Code, which I think is really awesome, and I'll probably be going back to that sometime in the future because I really like it. But Android Studio, search Android Studio, install Android Studio. And I'll say for Linux, download. And we'll click the download there. You have to agree to something and download it. Keep in mind, 737 megs. So these things are not actually small. All right. So that's all I really need to do. So where I downloaded this, under this section, I'm going to click on the IntelliJ Ideal C, Idea I D I C something like that. I'm going to extract that. I'm going to extract that to the document section right there. I already did that. Then I'm going to extract the Android Studio to the same area right there. I didn't do that. Before I go any further, I'm going to go into the terminal and actually click, I'm sorry, install git and curl. If you don't install these applications, you will get errors, and I will not figure out. It took me a long time to figure out what happened. Took a lot of searching. So those two things, just install them right up front and be done with it. Okay, so we're, we're good to go there. We don't have to do anything else. I'm going to close this one, close this. And then I'm going to go to the document section and go here. Bin. Before I go any further, for Ubuntu and Nautilus, the file manager, you have to go in Preferences, Behavior, Executables. It's normally Display Them. Click on Ask What to Do, okay? I didn't install anything else on this computer system or anything like that. So this is a fresh install, except I did that previously. Um, and so when you double click on this, you could display the code, but that's not really what we want. We just want to run the shell script. So run the application right here, run. And a lot of this is waiting. Do not import settings. I don't have any previous settings to import. Go down, accept, send anonymous usage, usage statistics to JetBrains. You know, I don't know, you could do what you want. I'm gonna click yes, because I am using their stuff for free, you know, least I can do. Um, that's, that's up to you though. IntelliJ, if by the way, um, you're really a high powered, developer, you might want your own preferences. I really don't. Um, so I'll just keep clicking defaults for all these things. And we're good, right? Well, actually not. There's a long way to go. So hit the configure, plugins. And here I'll write flutter. 
search in repositories, and install. Restart it. OK. And it actually shuts down. It doesn't restart it. OK, well, let's restart it again. By the way, for GNOME, what you could do is click here and IntelliJ, add that to favorites. Oh, it is already added to favorites. Oh, never mind. OK. So I already did that. Then I'm going to, going to create a new project right here, Flutter. And Flutter SDK path, we don't have that, so we'll have to install it. Click on that. I'm going to install it under the home slash Richard slash Flutter right there. So I'm just going to do that. And it's going to clone the Flutter repository. This doesn't take long, but just to spare you guys a little, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the pause and see you back when it's done, okay? Okay, that didn't take too long. So project name, I guess... Flutter app, something like that. And it's an application as opposed to a plugin or package. And we don't really need to touch these um, for right now. And I'm going to go finish. Okay. So it's creating a Flutter project. Notice there's a little bit of problems right here already. We're getting some errors. We'll get there. Okay, show tooltips, no thanks. I'll go ahead and close that down. Um, migrate to Gradle. So Gradle, Gradle is the build system. So you, you get all these things, these, these parts of the program, you put it all together and you make an actual binary that you can run, right? So that is what can actually, we can do that. I, I'll send Flutter plugin anonymous reports. Eh, okay, I'll do that too. So um, that's what the build system is. And there's several different types of build systems here. Um, there's Ant, Maven, and Gradle, I think there are. Um, I don't really know the big difference between them, one or the other. Uh, I'm going to just leave that alone. But right here, there's some other problems. So we'll go under Tools, Android, SDK Manager. And here, click Edit. All right, it's not obvious to do what to do, but click Edit. And then it's going to install the Android SDK. Software development, notice it's pretty big. To download side, 1.02 gigs. And I'll let it install. And so again, I'll put it on the pause just so that it'll spare you guys. And um, I'll see you back in a, almost instantaneously. Okay, well, we're back, and here is, it's finished. We'll finish up here. Okay. We still gotta keep going on. Then we go back to tools, again, Android. Now notice the AVD Manager is no longer whited out. So we'll click on AVD Manager. I'll explain that in just a second. I'm gonna pick a pixel. What an AVD manager actually is, it's an emulator it itself. So click, click. I'm going to download NuGet right there. And I'm going to say accept. I'll explain this in just a second, but it takes a little while to download, okay? So what AVD emulator is, if I'm going to make an application, you know like it when you're doing web programming, um, you can actually just see, just refresh your browser and actually see what the result is, right? So how are we going to do that here? We don't want to compile it every time, load it onto your phone and run it and stuff, right? So what we're going to want to do is just have a, have a virtual device, a picture of a phone, and just run it and see what it would do in that phone. So that's a, a virtual, a virtualized phone. So it's a virtual machine, or it's a, rather an emulator and emulates it, mimics it, copies the exact behavior of that particular phone. All right. So what we have to do is we have to download an image, a type of phone. So what I'm going to, I chose is the pixel. Why? Oh, just because I did. Um, there was no other reason. And then I want to choose an image. And so what would I actually choose? Well, how Android actually works is that every image, every version of the operating system, it is compatible, forward compatible with things in the future. So in other words, if I have NuGet right here, Android 7.0, 
it should any program that can run on 7.0 should run on future versions but if i if i develop a program for 7.0 it won't necessarily and probably won't run on android 6.0 okay so we have to keep that in mind so the question is on what type of device do you want to develop and you can develop on android 1.0 but why would you it's going to be very limited you're not taking advantage of a lot of the features of later versions but you don't always want to de um you know develop on android what is this uh th this is going to be like 8.0 8.1 or something like that you don't want to necessarily develop on um oreo which is way up here and just because not many people are using that operating system right so the most popular right now i think is nougat so android 7.0 so i'm going to develop for that one right now and it's going to download here this takes a little bit of a while not that long but you could choose whatever you want to actually do if you want to target a specifically a particular phone that's all I want to do, nothing else. Then you could always just choose like the, the very latest one if it's the very latest type of phone and, and you're saying that I, I don't really want users, I want it just for me or I don't really want users uh, of older phones to use it at all whatsoever, okay? So we have to just keep that in mind, all right? So this shouldn't take too long. Um, I will just go ahead and pause it in the meantime again just to spare you and see you in just a little bit, okay? Okay, so we're done here. This is what's going on here. Let's go ahead and finish. Okay, we're still not done. We have to select it. Go next. And so Pixel API 24, that's just the name of it. You can name it whatever you want to name. And I'm going to go ahead and finish. This is where you sometimes run into some problems, right? Here, remember this page? It was just the previous one. Um, if you have a good graphics card, Automatic or hardware, GLES will be okay. If you have a weak graphics card, so in one of my computers, I had an Intel, um, uh, the Intel GPU. So basically it was the GPU that's basically the graphing, graphical processor unit. It's built into the chip and it's not actually a separate hardware video card. So you have to do software. So if for some reason you run the program and it doesn't work, click on software instead. You prefer to do hardware, of course, because it's going to be better, but just keep that in mind. That's one of the errors that I ran into and I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. Okay. So it loads up right now. When it loads up, you can't really move it. I'm grabbing on it and trying to move it around. I can't actually do it at this point in time, but that was a little confusing for me too. So wait until it loads up a little bit, then I should be able to left click it and grab it and maybe put it over to the side, right inside of here. Okay. So we're done, right? Not quite. Unable, please run Flutter Doctor to just diagnose potential issues. That's actually not the problem. I'm going to hit the run button here. So it's going to run and it should display right here. But it doesn't. Um, Java Home is not set to no Java. Okay. So how do we fix this? There is probably a very easy way to do it. I just don't know. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Shut down here. And what I'm going to do is, in the documents, go to Android Studio, okay? Go to the bin, and I'm going to just install this, run this, and see what happens. Do not import. So Android Studio is another IDE, Integrated Development Environment, um, in order to develop with Flutter. I'm not sure if it's better or worse, it's just different, but I think we'll use IntelliJ just for right now. And next, next finish. Nothing to do, finish. And I think that is what actually did it. That actually sets it up. So you can use Android Studio or you can actually use IntelliJ itself. But just to let you know, when you install it here, it sets it up and it establishes, it sets the environment variable for the Java. And again, I, I'm sure there's an easier way to do than installing an entire um, Android studio. Uh, I, I guess I'm just that lazy, okay? So it's kind of setting things up. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. 
I'm going to reopen it in a second, okay? So just hang in there. And what I'll do is I'm going to open the IntelliJ. So you can use whatever you want to. I think I'm going to be using IntelliJ to, to learn about Flutter. And so I have this program right here. It says migrate project to Gradle. So what Gradle is, it's a build system. So I get all of this code. I get some images. I get some other stuff to put inside of my um, application. And I, I, I have to build it together. So I have to use a build system. Gradle is one of them. I think there's Maven. I think there's Ant or Gant something like that. Um, that's not going to be that important for this right now. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead under devices, open Android emulator, Pixel API right there. Got it. And then I'm going to run this application and really cross my fingers. So before remember it said the job because of Java was the environment variable wasn't set up quite right. But it wasn't overtly painful either to just install the Android Studio. And next, we'll just look at Android Studio and how it runs and how it looks. Um, by the way, the first run is always the slowest. It's really not always this slow. This is really not a fast computer. Um, what computer do I have? Uh... Hang on a second. I don't even remember uh, where is the system settings. Right there. And details. Um, I-767. <laughs> That's actually not that weak of a computer. Just for the record, this is a laptop though, okay? It kind of looks on paper like it's a little bit fast, but... It's not that fast. Okay, just keep that in mind. Um, Gradle build failed. Oh, I'm really, really sorry. You know something? Um, I'm going to put this on a pause for a second, okay? Okay, um, I did forget to do one thing. So in the... When Before we do anything, remember we said um, sudo apt install git and curl. We also have to install 32-bit libraries. So let me go back to the terminal. Paste this on there. I can't believe I forgot that. I'll write that in the comment section itself to install that in the very beginning. All right going to close that down and let's try running it again. I hope it doesn't run take that long again, okay? So And again when you rerun it, um I'll, I'll show you real quickly how quick it actually is to run again. See right here, here it is. So not too long, right? And if I need to change the color, so right here just change the color of Let's just say green. I could just change it like that. I save it. Hmm, where's the save button? Here it is, save. It changes automatically. Okay, so it very, very quickly. So that's the setup. If you want to go ahead and use Android Studio, of course, you can always do that. Again, if you just prefer Android Studio, studio.sh um, Studio, I don't think they actually have a I, I don't, they actually, I believe they do actually have a Flutter plugin, but I don't see where it actually is. Let's not do this because you have to install a heck of a lot more stuff going on inside of here. So on second thought, let me just end it right there. We'll install and use IntelliJ and further develop Flutter and learn Flutter from here. Okay, thank you.